Station. Invertebrates comprise around 97% of animal diversity and about 80% of total named species diversity. Invertebrates include some incredibly flashy organisms. Every phyla has some representative that uses visual imagery to advertise or defend itself. In many cases, the flash of an invertebrate might just be for a second, but it makes a strong impression. For some students, flash cards represent a good way to cement memory and a fun way to take new information and make it meaningful. In this teachable moment, I will teach you how to play a card game that will help you learn how to classify the animal phyla. By doing this, we can review the differences between traditional phylogeny and the advances that have been made in modern molecular biology. This video will help you build your vocabulary and also help you learn how to correctly classify the animal phyla. However, before we get into the game itself, I want to review the main divisions in animal classification. The first evolutionary split takes place between having true tissues or not. Sponges in the clade Parazoa represent the only phyla that does not have true tissues. Everything else is at EU or true metazoan. From this slide, you should have learned three words. Parazoa, eumetazoa, and periphera, the phylum of sponges. The second evolutionary split involves radial versus bilateral symmetry. The vast majority of animals show bilateral symmetry, just fold in half. However, jellyfish and tenophores show a radial plan where each plane gives you an identical cut. This allows for sensing and food acquisition in any direction. The next split in traditional phylogeny includes coelomates, organisms that have a coelom, versus those that do not, a coelomates. Pseudocoelomates are a third category that have a space, but not lined with mesoderm. Using coelomes, remember those are just cavities, and their formation as a classification mechanism has actually lost favor in modern molecular biology. We will discuss more about that in class after you have read the article, A Can of Worms. To understand this controversy, it remains important that you know the terminology associated with coelums and coelum formation in both protostomes and deuterostomes. In protostomes, coelum formation comes from splitting mesoderm, called schizocelous coelum formation. Say that fast five times. But think of slicing the top of a pita. In contrast, the coelum in deuterostomes originates from folding. Think of it as a pita that you fold over or even a calzone with sealed edges. Besides coelom formation, you need to know the other differences between protostomes and deuterostomes. Proto means early or first, and deutero means second. Stome refers to mouth. Then you can put them together. Protostome, first mouth. Deuterostome, second mouth. Several developmental differences exist between protostomes and deuterostomes. These include fate of the blastopore and the type of cleavage. Echinoderms are the only deuterostome that we will mention in class. Instead of coelums determining clades or groups, all protostomes now belong to two clades in molecular phylogeny, lophotrochozoan or ecdysozoan. Now that we have reviewed the classification terms, let's go ahead and play the game. The game is called Go Invertebrate. I based it loosely on the ideas of Go Fish, where you keep some cards and toss away others. The game Go Invertebrate has two stacks of cards. The first are the yellow cards. We'll call them the Go Invertebrate cards. And these have characteristics for classification. So for example, one card might be a protostome. I actually cut and pasted pictures out of the book to improve your visual recognition. The second stack of cards are the white cards, the invertebrate phyla cards. Each phyla is represented that we'll study. For example, my favorite, mollusca. Pick a phyla card. 
we have the phylum Nematoda. Pick six goinvertebrate cards. Eumetazoa, Lophotrochozoan, Trochophore larval stage, spiral cleavage, schizocelocelum formation, and a deuterostome. All right, decide which of the yellow cards match your phyla card. Nematodes are protostomes, so deuterostome doesn't match. Nematodes are protostomes, so they do have schizocelocelum formation. They do have spiral cleavage. However, they are ectisozoan, so we discard that one, discard this one, and they are eumetazoans. All right, so we got three matches in our first go invertebrate. Now we're going to go invertebrate and pick three more cards. Radial cleavage, radial symmetry, and a coelomate. All right, now we have to discard or keep the matches as well. So nematodes are actually pseudocelomates. We discard. They have bilateral symmetry. We discard. And they have radial cleavage. We already know that, or they don't have radial cleavage, so we discard there. OK, now we're going to go invertebrate one more time, because we don't have all of the characteristics. One, two, three. Oh, getting closer. All right, do they have enterocelosium formation? Nope, they have schizo. They're protostomes. However, th uh, are they acelomates? Nope, they're actually pseudocelomates, but they do have bilateral symmetry. So we have one more match in our go invertebrate. All right, now what we're going to do is pick another phyla card. All right, in this case, we have the phylum of platyhelminthes, or flatworms. First, we'll match what we have here. They are eumetazoans. All right, they are bilateral. They are protostomes. They have schizocelous formation. And they do have spiral cleavage. So right now, all of those match. All right, the next thing that we would want to do is to figure out if any of these in the discard pile pertain to platyhelminthes. All right, well, platyhelminthes are acelomates, so we can put that one there. They don't have coelom enterocelis. They don't have radial cleavage or symmetry. They're not coelomates. However, they are lophotrochozoans. We can add that to our pile. And they do have a trochovore larval stage and they're not deuterostomes. So just by compare and contrast, you can identify which cards are missing. So we have cards about coelom formation and cleavage. Uh, we don't have a coelomate card for nematoda, and we're missing uh, the fate of the blastophore. So by playing the game and getting familiar with the cards, you can learn about all of the classification. In this video, we used a game, Go Invertebrate, to learn about classifying animal phyla. After viewing this video and playing the game, you should 1. Be comfortable with invertebrate vocabulary. 2. Identify the differences between traditional and molecular phylogeny. 3. Determine which cards match and which do not. 4. Compare and contrast the differences between phyla. For this video, I invented a card game for you to learn invertebrate phylogeny. I've posted these cards on Moodle. Download the cards so that you have your own set, or you can make them on index cards. Now, for your homework, play the game with your classmates several times. Make notes about what you learn about invertebrate classification, and let me know how it goes.